Hi guys, it's Rizalka, and we're back at Medford's Jeweler. Not jewelers, anyway. And on request of everyone asking, I have finally decided to get myself a um, a timer. So yes, it may go off very loudly. I haven't tested it. Anyway, as you can see, I oh, I actually haven't spoken to Melinda just in this one because I um saved the game and it corrupted, so I had to go back. All right, so that was what we saw before. Um, let's look at the window. Medford's Jewelries is quite busy. A sign over one display reads, Big sale on all gold jewelry. There is a line by the cash register. Really? There just looks like there's a woman squatting. Oh dear, I hope she doesn't think that's a toilet. Um, the desk in the office is covered with receipts for jewelry sold in the shop. They're all dated yesterday. There's a framed photograph of the Hope Diamond on Mr. Medford's desk. Why that was relevant, who knows? Maybe it's a hope dream he has. Ha ha! The hope diamond is a hope. Ha ha! <laughs> Who knows what we'll find at quarter time. But let's click into it. Go on, hurry up. Mike Walker and Willie Barr are best friends. They hang out here a lot on weekends. Hey guys. Sure, Mike went into Mrs. Minetsky's yard yesterday, but only to get our ball back. He didn't go into her house. No way. I climbed a tree to check out where the ball went, so I saw him the whole time. He just grabbed the ball and left. So you say. I only climbed into Mrs. Menenski's yard to get back my baseball. We were playing under the treehouse, and I accidentally hit one over the fence. Mrs. Menenski gets real mad if she finds out stuff in her yard, so I got out of there fast. I didn't go near her house. She'd kill me if she caught me there. You know what I think's funny is that you guys were playing underneath our treehouse, and we had no idea. And why are you guys even playing underneath our treehouse? It's not like it's a big, huge hangout for everyone. A flyer for the skateboard club is tacked to the arcade bulletin board. A notice says that the girls' baseball team, softball team, sorry, sign ups is next week. A coupon for free ice cream at Sweet Treats is tacked to the board. A note says, free when you buy 50 tokens. Why any of that was relevant, who knows. Mike's gym bag contains his baseball uniform and a ball. The baseball uniform is dirty. He's a dirty boy. But we have all our case notes. So let's solve. Alright. Alright. Only her mink coat is missing. There is a pearl earring. It's for a pierced ear. Um. Hmm. Mrs. Harper has pierced ears. Mrs. Harper has a lot of unpaid bills. These are all the clues, but let's make sure we use the most important ones to show- Ah, so you don't like those ones, you bitch. <laughs> um. Alright. This one? Because obviously that's the um, evidence. Um, this one, because now we know that she knows about the key. She has pierced ears and a lot of paid bills. Those are the clues we need. Now who do you th think stole Mrs. Minensky's mink? Mrs. Harper, the old hag. You're right, Mrs. Harper stole the mink. Let's check the evidence. Mrs. Minensky left her key under the mat for Melinda Juice so she could come over and feed her cats while Mrs. Minensky was out of town. Melinda Juice said that the mink was still on the rack when she left Mrs. Minensky's yesterday morning. We found a pearl earring by the coat rack on the bleh, the, the mink used to hang on. Neither Mrs. Minensky nor Melinda Juice have pierced ears, so they couldn't wear this kind of earring. It's actually a shepherd's hook. Um... Sylvia Torres told us that Mrs. Harper always wears a mink coat to concerts and parties. She was wearing a different one at a concert last night. Mrs. Harper told us that she thought some of her silverware was missing after Melinda Juice went into the kitchen. When we, when we checked the kitchen, we saw that the silver set was complete. She told us a lie. That bitch. We saw that Mrs. Harper has a lot, well, a lot of unpaid bills and blah 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 blah. Uh, Mrs. Harper does have pierced ears, so the earrings could be hers. And she told us that she heard Mrs. Menenski discussing the mink coat and the hidden key, so she would have known how and when to enter the house. Oh, young love. <laughs> Nancy, put your glasses on. 
Hey, look, it's a letter from Mrs. Menensky. This is really nice. She's right. Rizulka deserves all the credit for finding the missing mink. What's the matter, Jake? You've got like a stutter today. Yeah, th th that's right. Um, that's right. This thank you note deserves a place in the scrapbook, like all of them. Dear Rizulka, I can't thank you enough for all your help in retrieving my mink. Once we confronted Mrs. Harper, she confessed immediately. It seems that the recent collapse of her family's oil company... Nee has forced her into selling some of her antiques, and sadly, her trademark mink coat. When the symphony opened, she felt she couldn't face her society friends without the mink that they'd come to expect her in, so she used the key under my mat to borrow mine. She had planned to return it before I came home, but it arrived earlier than expected. Melinda the dear has offered Linda a job at Medford's to help make ends meet. Please join me for the lemonade and cookies, in appreciation for your fine work, Mrs. Minensky. I don't think that she would have returned the jacket. Um, ah, you know, um, just because, you know, she's a cow. Well, she lied to us about, you know, the whole, um, cutlery set. And she tried to frame Melinda Juice. So that doesn't sound like someone who is going to return a coat. That sounds like someone who stole something, and when it got discovered a little bit earlier than she planned, then she was kind of like, well, shite. <laughs> so yeah. Kids are playing, 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 playing. Oh, this is the International Idol, isn't it? Attention all sweet units. The search for the missing Buddha is over. The valuable statue was found in the Andrew Jackson suite of Swank's Hotel. Yow! I heard that stolen Buddha on the news. It was stolen from a monastery in Tibet three weeks ago. Top detectives from all over the world are on the case. All units, we have several suspects but have made no arrest. Repeat, we have made no arrest. Further investigation needed. Lead detective is Mr. Banbar, visiting us from Egypt. Case headquarters is the Richwood Police Station. That is all. And now, let me tell you the, tonight's winning lotto tickets. Um... <laughs> I heard that Mrs. Polaria was ho hosting an international art show at Swank's Hotel. I wonder what she knows about the stolen Buddha. She did it. No. <laughs> I can't say that for certain yet. Wow, this has actually only got four locations in the entire thing. This is going to be interesting. Oh, looks like she's being taken away by the police now, so maybe my hunch was correct. Whoa! I think that's an early warning. I don't know. It says it still has two minutes left in any case. Let's keep going. Um, maybe we can find something in the room where the, the stolen Buddha was found. Hey, Mrs. Case. Hi, Mrs. Case. We heard there was some excitement here at the hotel. Well, yes. I certainly hope that this publicity about stolen art doesn't hurt the hotel. The police found that stolen statue in the Andrew Jackson suite where Mrs. Polaria held her art show. No wonder she's being taken away. I know that the Buddha wasn't there earlier this evening when Chuck, Mrs. Polaria, and I inspected the suite, and we all saw all the, and we saw all the people who visited Mrs. Polaria before the police arrived. Who were those people? First, there was Melinda Juice. Then several other people arrived. Chuck is better than I am with names. Perhaps, perhaps she remembers them all. Chuck is not a woman. Chuck is not a woman. Ah, <sighs> soon everyone came down but Mrs. Polaria. Right after that, the police arrived. Hey, Chuck, she called you a woman. Hi, Chuck. Do you see all the people who went up to the Andrew Jackson suite? <laughs> you bet. First, I helped Mrs. Polaria carry up a bunch of boxes and crates and stuff. I had to be real careful. Some of them were fragile pieces of art. She was really nice, though. She tipped me ten bucks. That's nice. Then this guy came in with an English accent. Uh, My Chutney Miles. He carried his own packages, though. Then a Chinese woman, Madame Wen, arrived in a cab with her daughter. She had a shopping bag from Greensvale, that expensive store. The daughter had two fancy leather suitcases. I helped to carry them to the elevator. Then Mrs. Boren went up to the suite. She's been staying here. She's really nice. She had a little cart of boxes and packages. Boy! Chuck, you really do have a great memory. Are all those people who went up to the suite... Bleh? Are 
all the people who went up to the street before the statue was found? Yeah. No. I almost forgot Mrs. Juice. She went up before Miles Chutney. She wasn't carrying any packages or anything, just a little purse and a book. Ah, uh, how sweet. In any case, um, the alarm thing did not work, so great. In any case, we're um, out of time, so I'll see you guys soon. Bye.